you so much for your coming. Thank you very much for your interest in our native breeds. The topic of today is uh, not one standard, but two. Both are like us. Russian European like, which is below, white and black. And another one which is above, this reddish. Uh, the name like uh, origin is um, easy. Like, this is bark. These dogs are barking when uh, finding the game. So it's very easy. Uh, today we have two breeds of like, and next time another two. But it is the topic of the next time. But before to consider and analyze the standards of these breeds, which I will do one by one, as always, I will tell you something about the approach I will use for the better understanding of the standard provisions. This approach is the model approach uh, and it includes two models biomechanical model of the dogs and harmonic model of the dogs which are valid for the majority breeds i would say for the overwhelming majority of the breeds uh, of course there are some exceptions and even for these exceptions these models are valid not uh, fully, but still valid. But it is not uh, the topic of today. So, the first model, biomechanical, devoted to the soundness of the dogs. And the second one, to the harmony. Uh, these models are resulted by Lockyer's researches done by me during 24 years years from 1963 to 1987 and uh, they are based on the specifics of the Soviet breeding strategy. According to that strategy, very different from the Western one, the only breeding commission of each individual breed club was in charge of breeding plan a year. And uh, since 1963, during almost 30 years, I have been chairman of that commission, first in Doberman Club and later on in Schnauzer. In some periods, that plan included per year about three to four hundred brood bitches. So you can imagine uh, our statistics, which was really huge. So. All hypotheses appear, appeared during the breeding process were checked for the trustfulness. Biomechanical model is the integrity of postulates. Harmonic model is the integrity of the harmonious proportions. Later on, I have defended the doctoral dissertation in biology named Dog Confirmation Improvement through biomechanical model of the dog. So the previous hypothesis became afterwards status of the scientifically proven facts. Therefore, you can fully trust them and use in your practice. Both biomechanical model and the harmonic model are of practical value. And the judges can find their universal reference points, which help them to increase the objectivity of the assessment. Breeders can find here the selective algorithm for the acceleration of the breeding pro progress. And this is the preface. Now I am ready to tell you about the biomechanical model of the dog using the example of the Russian European like. Картинку со всеми внутренностями. So you can see here how does it look 
outside from outside and this is look from inside skeleton is fully presented here uh, and now uh, I'm waiting for the next step where all lines and angles of the biomechanical model will be inscribed in this silhouette so in front of you there is the dogs with the lines which are here in the accordance with the biomechanical model as i told you this model is the integrity of several postulates and the, the postulate is the statement which doesn't need any proof nevertheless I will tell you one by one about these postulates and uh, after that I will come back and give you some comments, essential, essential comments. Катюша, пожалуйста. Хорошо, мы используем эту картинку для первого постулата. So, the postulate number one is the postulate according to which the spinal column from the first uh, thoracic vertebra to the tail set is divided by the anatomical divisions according to the ratio 2, 1, 1. When two units fall on the thoracic part of the spine or actual back, one unit falls on the lumbar part or loin and the last one unit falls on the sacrum which is the upper part of the group or rump the same next postulate is that uh, i would like to to see the picture please if we have it right here but maybe maybe i will uh, maybe i will use this one this so one. Uh, нет, Катюша, третий. Mm -hmm. okay. please pay your attention to the blue lines you can see how uh, they created the first blue line from the left a bleak line is along the shoulder blade medium uh, line and the second one connects hip and iliac tuber so here you can see the point of intersection i will call this uh, angle pendulum not really pendulum but uh, in some sense conditionally pendulum it will be easier to me and more convenient to use it for the better explanation so the second postulate uh, is that the angle by the axis of the pendulum is 90 degrees so one more time first is 211 and this is regarding top line proportions from the first 30 um, thoracic vertebra to the tail set and the next one is uh, angle created by these two blue lines and the angle by the axis of the uh, uh, this pendulum is right one 90 degrees yes uh, and i have to find out the cursor Oh my goodness, as usually it's not obedient. Oh my goodness. I believe that I need assistance of Sasha. Sa Sasha, I need your help, please. Please help me to uh, to find out the cursor, which should be obedient. doesn't work <laughs> every time i am fighting with this cursor 
something is not under the control. Uh, Саша, вы далеко? Звонит он вам, звонит. Да? Угу. Саша, меня не слушается курсор. Помогите мне, пожалуйста. Да, хорошо. 58 CPI. Шестерка. Ага, верно. Соединение, да, я видел это. Вот, теперь у меня курсор послушан. Саша, вы... Я тоже не понимаю. Потому что если вы не понимаете, то только мне сам Бог велел не понимать. Да, благодарю вас. Благодарю. До свидания. Thank you so much. Now I have a cursor and can use it. So this postulate is the principle of two horizontal lines. This one and that one. The first one connects the humerus scapula joint and hip joint. The second one, the lowest, connects the elbow joint and knee joint. Next postulate is principle of two verticals. Katyusha, дайте мне, пожалуйста. So, according to this postulate, the elbow is located under the top of with us, as well as the knee joint is located under the tail set. So, you can see these two verticals. Uh, there is uh, some uh, conclusion which is illustrated by the, by the next drawing, but um, I will use it when giving the comments. Uh, okay, unfortunately we don't have this drawing now, which is a, of course the technical mistake, uh, but uh, I will use it, by, uh, I will use the explanation. So please take a look. This postulate is that the length of the body and the distance between front and rear limbs are equal. These distances should be defined like that. The first one, the length of the body, I'm measuring from the point of sternum, not from the point of shoulder, but from the point of sternum, which is a little bit in, uh, in front of the joint to the end uh, to the buttock and the second one is between front and rear legs if the front limbs are moved under the body and hind legs are moved are placed behind until uh, to the vertical rear pasta So, one more time. Length of the body and distance between the front and the rear legs is the same. Now, let us come back to the beginning. Thank you for the picture. It's correct picture. And uh, I will give some comments to these postulates. So, the first postulate is 2, 1, 1 which defines the proportions of the anatomical divisions of the top line from the first thoracic vertebra to the tail set. This postulate is number one, not, because of, not only because of the order, but, which is the most important, because of the value. 
Uh, if dog is built according to this postulate regarding the top line, it will be provided the dog has strong top line, deep chest, and in front, in first approximation, correct re front angulations, I mean humerus scapula, and uh, rear angulations, and first of all, coxofemoral angulation. And uh, the last but not least, that the format of the body will be approximately correct. As a format of the body, we determine a ratio between length of the body and height at with us. Multiply 100%. Uh, so it's very big complex of the important positive features which are in charge of the uh, correct construction of the body. Sound dog. Let us go inside and consider something else which could you help to understand uh, even deeply. Uh, two units uh, fall on the actual back. That's why the back is the longest part of the top line. This is its half. Long back or long thoracic part of the spine and uh, brisket uh, should be connected all together. Why? Because the thoracic part of the spine is upper part of brisket. And uh, long uh, thoracic part or long actual back means long brisket. It was proven that the long chest or long brisket, uh, as the result, has deep chest. So the influence of the um, long chest on the depth of the chest is proven. Long chest leads to the deep chest. An upper part of the chest uh, could be used for that because uh, and it could be proven the ratio between actual back and the length of the chest is two to three so two third of the chest is the actual back This is important because these two dimensions, length of the chest and the depth of the chest, provide big volume of the uh, rib cage. Uh, and the chest will be roomy. Why do we, uh, don't we consider the width of the chest. Why don't we looking for the maximum of the uh, chest um, in the cross section? Because otherwise the correct set of the shoulder blade and upper arm 
will be spoiled, which will lead to the uh, wrong transmission, wrong movement of the forelegs. Instead of the demand uh, to provide the, the translational movement. One more time, with the other words. If uh, the chest is too broad because of excessively sprung ribs, it will lead to the wrong position or wrong set of the shoulder blade and the upper arm. And finally, influence on the inclination of the forelegs from the longitudinal axis of the body instead of to provide the translational movement. So, length of the chest and depth of the chest are practically enough uh, that we could consider um, correct um, volume of the chest, which is important because, uh, because of the development of the lung, heart, and general uh, blood vessels. That's why long back or long thoracic part is required for that. Next part of the top line is the loin, and the loin is in charge of the transmission of the multi thrusts from the rear, which are transmitted through the liver of the hind legs to the iliac tuber. Uh, transmission of this um, push or what? to the front. Short top line is oscillating with not a big amplitude. So, connect it with the actual back. Uh, it will influence this part of the back in the, in the same oscillation with a similar amplitude. It's very important this, that in this part, back is very vulnerable because it's deprived of any support from below. Last for ribs are uh, false ribs and they're not connected to the breast bone. Now try to imagine that the um, loin is longer. Long loin will oscillate with a bigger amplitude and will involve in this process of the oscillation back in, in its back part. And the oscillation of the last part of the back, deprived of any support from below, will be dangerous because amplitude in this case increased and this oscillation with the age and loading will lead to the soft back so from both aspects from both point of view this uh, demand 211 or even we, we don't know exactly these numbers and uh, it is mentioned here on the uh, quantitative level. Long part, short part, short part uh, is explained on the level of the common sense. It's easy. So, one more time. Two, one, one. The first postulate is the most important postulate in the system, which um, defines, which unites other uh, postulate in the integrity. Uh, 
the second postulate uh, angle uh, by the axis of the pendulum is 90 degrees this uh, demand creates preconditions for the equality of the front and rear strides and uh, otherwise the movement will be disbalanced if these strides are not equal another just a moment another sense another reason is that the slant of shoulder blade as well as the slant of the pelvis namely iliac bone are not independent and they depend dependence of these two slants is based on the a demand of 90 degrees angle by the axis of the pendulum. Uh, look at these two horizontal lines. Uh, I have to notice, just um, <coughs> then, then <coughs> when the dog is trotting, these lines are oscillating contrary. Hip joint is um, coming up and the knee joint is going down. And the uh, oscillations, the mutual oscillations compensate each other. That's why all disturbances uh, which appear when dog is jumping and falling uh, practically uh, don't change the position of the spinal column they are softened because of this two horizontal lines oscillating contrary. Uh, the principle of two verticals. As you can see in this case, the elbow joint, please pay attention, not elbow ulna, but elbow joint, and the top of the withers are placed on one vertical line. That means that the upper arm is turned counterclockwise as much as possible in the physiological limits. And uh, this tendency is uh, positive because in this case, when uh, this uh, uh, elements are uh, uh, these elements which n determine the humerus scapular angulation um, will uh, will be close to the ninety degrees of the humerus scapula and 90 degrees angle is um, the best one for the most economical regime of the functioning of the joint the same situation is here uh, slant of the upper thigh provides the correct angle between upper thigh and sciatic bone. This angle is uh, of the same value as this one when it is close to 90 degrees because in this case the best economical regimen uh, will be provided. Uh, 
I'm still uh, uh, here uh, telling about the importance of the two verticals principle. Look, this is the line which connects these two joints, elbow joint and knee joint. And this is the line along the top line, from the first vertebra to the tail set. And inside there is a spinal column, which is practically horizontal. Please, pay attention. Elbow joint is exactly under the end of the spinal column, here in the beginning. And at the end, we have another mobile support because the knee joint is located under the tail set. That's why the whole spinal uh, column um, from the beginning to the end is supported by two joints. And uh, that's why uh, the top line is additionally supported from below and uh, all disturbances will be softened on this level. And uh, now the last one, which is not illustrated here, as I told you before. Um, when uh, I told that the, the uh, length of the body and distance between the front and rear legs is the same. Uh, why? Let us imagine that dog is deprived of any angulations of their limbs. That the limbs are like the legs of the chair without any angulations, one and two. In this case, it will be exactly the same, either length of the body or distance between the legs. But in reality, dog's body is moved forward regarding the front and rear legs. And they are moved forward to the same distance uh, regarding the front legs and the rear legs. Otherwise, the front and the rear strides will be not equal. And uh, the movement will be disbalanced. So, on the level of the common sense, I was trying you to give the comments to these postulates. And as I promised, and as I promised, this approach will give to the judge universal um, reference points, which will help him to increase the objectivity of his assessment, really. By the hands, the judge can check the proportions between anatomical parts of the spine and find out if it is the middle and this is the middle of the rest or not. He can check if these joints belong to one horizontal line as well as to another, joints belong to another horizontal line. The judge can see if the elbow is under the withers or no, as well as the stifle or knee is located under the tail set. And this is enough uh, to uh, say with uh, more objectivity <coughs> uh, 
because these points are uh, universal. Okay, this is approach um, which could be used either when judging or when breeding. But when judging, we are usually uh, based on our visual impression. And this is quite correct. Because from the nature, humans are gifted by the ability to differ. Beauty built dog from the ugly dog, but it is con concerning not only dogs. Uh, the human is able to uh, evaluate, to appreciate beauty and uh, to find out the uh, bad proportions. Why? Because from the nature, humans are in tune with the golden section, as well as his ears are in tune with the golden section and he's able to determine if the melody is cor uh, uh, right, correct or wrong or false. The same is with the eyes. But uh, first of all, what does it mean golden section? This is the topic of my next explanation. Another thing is that different people are in tune with the golden section on different levels. Some of them are in tune on the fine level, and other people tuning is more rough. That's why the assessment based on the visual impressions is subjective and how to um, increase the objectivity. This is the next model, harmonic model of the dogs. And I will be ready to um, tell you about the harmonious proportions of the dogs confirmation after I will shortly tell you about the golden section principle. Okay. I'm very sorry. I forgot to tell you about the movement assessment based on the biomechanical approach. So let's come back. Sorry for that. In front of you, you can see the dogs on the move. They are, the dog is trotting. This is a first look what you uh, see in the ring usually. Then if you um, have the imagination, you can see what is inside, in front, this is front part, and this is the hind part. But with the help of the biomechanical model, we can go deeper and find out better explanation what we can see and how we will, he, how we will assess them, this movement. Excellent, thank you so much. So, this picture is full of different lines, but they are known for you already. Uh, please, look. What can we see looking on this dog on the move? Excellent top line. Top line is close to the horizontal line. And this line is solid. Second, <coughs> we can see that the front stride and the hind stride are equal. That's why movement is balanced. Third thing you can see <coughs> that the legs from the opposite side are converging to the base of the vertical lowered from the, the point of intersection from the axis of the pendulum. 
lines. And uh, these blue lines define the boundaries of the span or of the swing of the limbs. And they are, these limbs are inscribed in this right angle. And the last criterion, this yellow line, this is a vertical line connecting eye and paw of the front leg in the moment of landing or closely. Moreover, and it was quite obviously, this line at this stage of movement are horizontal. About the uh, yellow line, why is it required? Because it defines the uh, condition of the equi equilibrium when landing. Uh, actually, uh, eye is a little bit in front of the ear, where the vestibular apparatus is located. So, this is a little bit in advance. And uh, that's why the equilibrium at the moment of landing is provided. We humans are usually saying, watch your step. The same is here. So, when we, finally, when we evaluating the movement, we have several criteria are used now to explain why this movement is balanced and uh, sound. Uh, more precisely, I, I, I would I have to say that side movement, because we don't see this dog movement from, uh, from the rear and from the front. Side movement. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm lucky that finally I did forget to tell you about this. And now uh, I really am ready to go to the golden section. Uh, the golden section is the universal form building principle of harmony. And this principle is well known from the ancient times. Ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, time of Renaissance and later on. During all these times, all this period, this principle was well known for uh, architects, for sculptors, for engineers, for scientists, for artists, for musicians in each field of um, human knowledge it was well known and used but it is not limited by human knowledge this principle is given from above everything around us and inside us is built according to this principle um, a lot of examples of this uh, principal influence, you can find in my book, Don Confir uh, Dog Confirmation and its Evaluation. And this book is available in UK in our dogs. But some of uh, these examples I can give you right now. For example, blood pressure, human blood pressure. Or um, proportions of the men and proportions of the uh, women bodies. A little bit later on, when I will tell you exactly about this uh, principle, uh, I, I will give you more details. Why is it there? Or um, the most 
uh, famous example is the egg, the Easter egg, which were used by uh, Fabergé as the symbol of the harmony. Double spiral of DNA is built according to the golden section. Um, maybe I, I will stop it right now. <coughs> but to be convinced, uh, I would like to repeat my suggestion to read my book. Um, three centuries before Christ, uh, Euclid um, gave the definition of this principle as a principle of the division of the whole segment in extreme and mean ratio. What does it mean? The segment O1 is divided by point X according to the golden section or according to the extreme and mean ratio if the whole segment, which is one, look, this is one, to its biggest part, which is X, please find it here, is the same as the biggest part, X, this is here, to the smallest one, one minus X, it is here. This is a very easy proportion, which could be easily transformed in the square equation. And the positive root of this square equation is square root from 5 minus 1, and all should be divided to 2. If we calculate to find out approximately meaning of this number, uh, we will have third approximation. 0 0.618 second approximation, 0 0.62. And the last approximation, 0 0.6, which is 6 to 10 or 3 to 5. So please remember this number. I especially I have especially highlight, highlighted in the red. Uh, this was definition of Euclid. 19 centuries later on, in 16th century, the um, monk Luca Pacioli, he was scientist and mathematician, wrote the book named La Proporzia Divina, or Divine Proportion, with other words, proportion given by God. In this book, he has uh, uh, mentioned 12 uh, properties of this uh, proportion. And uh, the actual proportion he named the, as the universal law of harmony. And uh, Leonardo da Vinci was the illustrator of this book. And he renamed uh, La Proporzia Divina, to the Sectio Aureo, which means golden section. And uh, because of that, this name became famous. And the initial name was forgotten, which is pity. Because the sense inside this definition is very deep. Proportion given by God. Now let us stop for a while and come back four centuries ago. In 12th centuries, another Leonardo, Leonardo Fibonacci, uh, who uh, lived in Pisa, was solving the problem and the result was very interesting sequence. You can see it. One, one, two. 
three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one. It's very easy, easily built. One plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus three is five. Three plus five is eight, and on. This is a sequence number one. The sequence number two is the modification of the first one. How it is built? We divide each previous to each next one member of the sequence. That's why one divide to one, one, now one second, now two third, three fifths, five eighths, eight thirteenth, and on. Please take a look at the final, which is the limit of this sequence. And limit of this sequence is the golden section. It is another way to find out the golden section as the limit of this Fibonacci sequence. That means that each member of this sequence is more or less approximation of the golden section. Two third, three fifth, five eighth. In the beginning, it is a rough approximation. Later on, it's becoming more precise approximation. But for us, when we are measuring the dogs, this number three to five is enough because of the measurement mistakes. It will be enough. Now something important. I would say that we have uh, now the moment of truth. Until now, the spinal proportion of the dog were uh, just, uh, how should I say, were declared. It was no any proof why the top line is divided according to this ratio, 2, 1, 1. Now you can see why. <coughs> because without these three initial numbers, the sequence could not be built. And the golden section could not be approached. So, for the initial tuning to the harmony of the dog conformation, these numbers should be defined at the initial level. The first approximation, the first tuning to the golden section is based on these three numbers. That's why you can understand why postulate number one is so important. Because if the dog is constructed, con constructed not like this numbers proportion two one one, the perfection of golden section will be never ever reached. So two one one first Fibonacci numbers are the base of the dog confirmation harmony for the majority of the breeds. Now, we can go to the dog's um, harmonious proportions bet between, because it would be um, surprisingly if the dog conformation uh, would avoid the influence of the golden section. So, I would like you to find out these proportions. And uh, I will tell you now about them. Depth of the body, uh, of the chest, to the length of the top line from the first thoracic vertebra 
to the tail set is golden section. Please take a look. Depth from the breastbone to the top of with us. Next one, please. Length of the chest to the length of the body is golden section. Uh, length of the chest. Here is a point where the, where the last false rib crosses this red line. So this is a distance from the fore chest to this point of interse intersection. And uh, uh, if you remember the definition from Euclid, and this is O, this is 1, this is point X, that means that the whole segment to its biggest part is the same as the biggest part to the smallest one. A ratio between the length of the body and uh, distance between occiput and pore of the hind leg placed behind to the vertical rear pastern is the golden section. Of course, we see this uh, in the um, plane, which is a vertical plane uh, parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body. And in reality, these points, occiput, and the hind leg pore, do not belong to this plane. So you have to understand that this point should be shifted by the hands when measuring to that vertical plane, which is parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body. следующий пожалуйста. Uh, no, just a moment. Some uh, small explanation. Uh, let us imagine that dogs is moving, walking, trotting, galloping. Then this segment, blue one, uh, will will be oscillating, but its oscillation will be based on this initial length. It's easy to imagine, and I believe that you can do it by yourself. Next one, please. The height at elbow Please take a look. This is an elbow joint, not elbow ulna. So the sum of head and neck is golden section. Of course, I could give the more precise explanation based on the numbers, but we are limited today. And the only thing I can use um, uh, this uh, Demand, uh, I will ask uh, to come back to the movement with a yellow line uh, on the picture. So, this criterion, vertical plane from the eye and uh, paw of the front leg when landing or close to it, could be reached only in that case when the front leg and some of head and neck moved forward could provide this criterion. And the last proportion, please. Cherry Pumorda. 
И там говорят, говорят, что курсор они видят. Я смотрю, действительно, он заморожен. Не работает опять курсор? Да. О, Господи, да что ж за безобразие? Не хочет. Нет. Безнадежно. Ага. Спасибо, Катюша. Спасибо большое. So, one more time. This criterion, which uh, uh, provides the equilibrium at the moment of landing, could be reached only when these two elements <coughs> front limb from the ground to the elbow joint and some of the head and neck length uh, create golden section. And the last proportion is that the uh, girth of the muzzle and girth of the skull create golden section. Now it's a time to remember the example I gave you a, a bit earlier, I mean egg, Easter egg, which Faberge used as the symbol of the harmony. The egg is constructed, is built, built according to the golden section. What I mean? Cross section of the egg and longitude, uh, cross um, diameter of the egg and the longitudinal diameter of the egg create golden section three to five. And probably uh, you know that it is quite uh, almost impossible uh, to destroy the egg squeezing evenly in your hands. So durable is this construction. And this is not accidental. Because the main property of the golden section is the balance between the beauty, which is possible to find out with the eye, and uh, the optimum of its functions. In case of the egg, it is a durability. In case of the dog, is the power of the bite. Uh, I told you about some examples illustrating the influence of the golden section. Now I can give you in the numbers. As I told you about the blood pressure, the normal blood pressure is between 125 to 75 to 130 to 80. 125 to 75 is 5 to 3. Look. 3 to 5. This is a Fibonacci member. And 130 to 80 is 8 to 13. It's also a Fibonacci member. Uh, men and women. And uh, the confirmation, the uh, construction. Um, with in the uh, at the level of the hips to the uh, shoulders is by the men is three to five. As well as for women, the waist to the uh, bust and waist to the hips is also three to five. And you can see also not only the influence of the golden section, but also influence the sexual dimorphism. One more example concerning the body uh, built, human body built. I believe you remember um, the picture of Leonardo when uh, man is inscribed in the circle, Vitruvi. So, the line through the navel 
divides the whole body of the human according to the ratio three to five or five to three this is the same if the whole height of the human is five then the biggest part from below from the navel is five uh, i told you five here no let us uh, look easily sorry it's difficult without illustration but I will repeat to exclude any misunderstanding navel level this is the level of the navel and this is what is below from the navel to the ground and this is above from the navel to the top of the head so the whole height of the human to the uh, lowest part from part from the ground to the navel is the same as this lowest part to the upper part from the navel to the top of the head so even in this case we find out the direct influence of the golden section and uh, we can go on now you have two tools the first one is the biomechanical model which can help you to increase the objectivity during the assessment of the dog uh, and another approach another model the harmonic model uh, can help you to find out if the proportions of the dog are according to the golden section now we are ready to go to the to the standard of the russian european like so the text is Uh, this is the Russian breed of hunting dogs from the European forest areas of Russia. The first record about northern ear pointed dogs was published by Shirinsky Shikhmatov in the album of the Northern Sledge Dog Lycus like in 1895. The dogs mentioned therein were named Cherimis and Ziryansky Lycus. Like the breed was limited to the regions of Komi, Udmurtia, Arkhangelsk, Yaroslavl, Tver, Moscow, and some other areas of Russia. In 1947, the offspring of Arkhangelsk, Komi, Karelia, Vachatsk, and other Laikas were united into one breed under the modern name of Russian European Laika. The breed standard for the Russian European Laika as a purebred dog was approved in 1952. The correct modern type of Russian European Laika as a recognized purebred dog was not achieved by breeding different Laika's offspring. It is the result of the selective breeding over a long period of time. General appearance medium-sized dog of medium to strong build their overall impression is that of a square built dog the length of the body point of shoulders to the point of the buttocks just a moment i will stop at this point uh, there is a, a coat muscles skin everything in front of the shoulder joint and uh, mm, uh, sternum of the bucket. It is almost square body dog. So the sternum is at the same plane as the shoulder joint or humerus scapula or just a little bit in front of it. That's why in the standard 
it is written that we are measuring the body length from the point of shoulders to the point of buttocks. It's practically the same, either from the shoulder joint to the buttocks or from sternum to the buttocks. And this prominent part is because of the, as I told you already, coat, muscles, and skin, <coughs> which um, uh, increase this prominence. Uh, being equal to the height at with us. This is the definition of the square-bodied dog. Uh, however, the length of the body may be slightly superior to the height at with us. So, almost square-bodied dog. Uh, the muscles are lean and well-developed. Strong bone structure. Sexual dimorphism is clearly pronounced. Uh, the Russian European like in some ways is similar to the Karelian beer dog. The difference is rather small, but I have to say that the Karelian beer dogs are stronger, uh, more massive, and just a little bit taller at with us. Plus, um, the Colors of the Karelian beer dog are limited uh, by the, the uh, black uh, as a predominant color and some white. As well as in the Russian European, like we have more colors, but it will be later on when we will come to this. Uh, part of the standard. Uh, something else, um, in the Russian European like us, the only scissor bite is accepted as the normal one. And all deviation from this um, um, bite are not accepted. And uh, in the Karelian beard dog, uh, the undershot and overshot should be punished. And there is nothing written about the level by it. And there is another difference. Uh, important proportions. Male square to almost square and female slightly longer. Um, index of format for males is from 100 to 103 and in females from 100 to 105. The height at with us exceeds the height at the crew by one to two centimeters in males, and it is equal to or exceeds the height at the crew by one centimeter in females. Uh, the length of muzzle is a little less than the ha half the length of the head. The distance from the ground to elbow is slightly more than the distance from the width to the elbow. We have already told about this um, statement several times. Usually, the height at elbows is measured by the level of the ulna of the elbow. And this distance is really a little bit more than the depth of the chest, from the top of the withers to this um, breastbone uh, level. But if we measure the height at elbows at the level of the elbow joint, then this is one half and this is another half of the height. So, you have to understand correctly what does it mean that the uh, height at elbows is just a little exceeds the depth of the chest. Don't forget the difference 
of the point of measurement? This one or that one? Behavior and temperament. Steady, evenly tempered, with a very well-developed sense of scent and detection of gain. Head. Uh, read the standard. Head lean viewed from above is a wedge-shaped, triangular, and uh, longer than broad. Cranial region. Skull relatively broad. And the occiput is well pronounced. It's uh, hidden uh, um, because of the slightly protruding super, superciliary arches give the impression of the pronounced stop, but it is never sharply pronounced. So it is very clearly visible here. This is the stop. And here you can see the superciliary ridge. And this is even more distinctive. So the actual stop is rather smooth, but because of these <coughs> points, it looks more sharp. But in reality, it is a not sharp. This is correct. Um, facial region. Nose of medium size, the nose is black in all coat colors. Uh, muzzle lean and pointed. And the length of the muzzle is slightly less than the length of the skull. It's visible. Uh, the planes of the muzzle, na nasal bone, and the skull are parallel. Uh, lips tight and firmly fitted. No, the mouth here and here is open, so maybe other pictures will be illustrate this statement. Uh, jaws teeth, white, large, strong, completely developed and evenly positioned. Complete dental formula, scissor bite, 42 teeth. Cheeks, well-developed cheekbones and muscles are clearly pronounced. No, cheeks are well-developed. Uh, and muscles are clearly pronounced. Eyes, not large, oval shape, with a moderately oblique set eyelids, not deep set or protruding, with a vivid and intelligent expression. Dark brown or brown eye color in any color of coat. Yes, pricked, not large, Mobile, set on high, V-shaped, pointed. Excellent. Uh, about stop, please take a look. This is the actual stop, and this is superciliary arch. That's why the stop looks more sharp, even in reality is not sharp. Now we are coming to the description of the other points of the of its conformation uh, neck muscular lean and dry uh, long oval in the cross section its length is equal to the length of the head you can you can find it here and make sure that this is true um, the neck is set at the approximately 45 to 50 degrees to the horizontal. It's 45. Body, with us, well-developed, very well-pronounced, 
especially in males. Back. Straight, strong, muscular, moderately wide. I will read until the whole description of the body, and then we'll give some comments. Uh, so one more time, uh, back. Straight, strong, muscular, moderately wide. Loin. Short, wide, muscular, moderately wide. Oh, 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 oh very sorry. It is a mistake. Short, wide, well muscled, slightly arched. Sorry. Croup, broad, moderately long, slightly sloping. Chest, broad, deep, oval shaped cross section, reaching the elbows. I mean elbow joint. Uh, uh, sorry, elbow alna, elbow alna. Underline and belly tucked up. The underline from the chest to the abdominal cavity is well pronounced. The square built or almost square built Russian European Lyca have the solid body. Solid body means compact body. Compact body means that the body is short coupled. And this coupling is providing by the loin, which should be short. Short part of the spinal column and uh, the actual back is long. Relatively, the top line, it is his half. It is the universal, universal proportion, as I told you, to approach the perfection of the uh, built, perfection of the body construction. That's why long chest is required and because of that chest is deep as i told you before so the top line proportions are classical two one one and nothing else i do remember the very first show we have organized in 1991. It was uh, held in Krylatska. And we have a, a rather big delegation from the Finnish Kennel Club. And Anita Hellman, a previous former general secretary of the Finnish club, was very interested in this approach. A lot of Lycas were shown that time, so she had the opportunity to examine by the heads <coughs> the top line proportions and were amazing because before that this uh, knowledge uh, was not... Uh, the, she, she didn't know about that. Try to not forget that the solid body, based on the correct proportions between the anatomical parts of the spinal column, are extremely important for the working dog because, because of the soundness. Working dogs need especially correct construction. So in case of the Russian European Lyca and in case of other Lycas breed, you will find out by the best specimen 
the correct ratio between back, loin, and sacrum. Uh, tail. Tail curled or sickle uh, curled or sickle curled. Touch the back, the upper thigh or buttocks. When stretched, reach down to the hook joint or be two to three centimeters shorter. Um, legs lean, muscular, four quarters. Lean, muscular, viewed from front straight, moderately wide and parallel. The height at, of the forelegs from the elbow to the ground is slightly superior to half the height at the waist. It was already discussed. From this point, this distance is slightly superior than the, than the depth of the chest. Uh, measured from this point, this part are equal. Uh, shoulder blades are long and well laid back. Upper arm well placed back, muscular. The angulations between the shoulder blade and upper arm is well pronounced. Let us let us now let us stop. A shoulder blade and upper arm for the majority of the breeds and the Russian European like belong to this majority are equal in the length. That's why uh, they slant, they contrary slants to the horizontal line, equal. Here is the angle, and here's the same angle. That's why the vertical projections of the upper arm and shoulder blade are also equal. And what we find here, if it is the middle of the whole height from the withers to the ground, then the shoulder joint is located at the level uh, which defines the equal vertical projections of the shoulder blade and the upper arm. This joint is in the middle of this distance. That's why these parts are equal. And look at this, please. We also can find two, one, one. So the body is constructed either along the top line or along the vertical line according to the golden section. That is the first initial rough tuning to the golden section. And now you can see how these models can help us to understand deeply some provisions, some requirements of the standard. Elbow, fitting close to the body, elbows are well developed and placed backwards, parallel to the body axis. Uh, we have already mentioned it, because uh, when they are uh, directed exactly backwards, backwards, the um, uh, translation movement of the four legs will be reached. Uh, forearm straight, lean, muscular of the oval cross section uh, viewed from the front moderately wide and parallel pastum short uh, slightly sloping when viewed from the side preferably no first digits due close uh, four feet oval, arched with a 
tight tooth. Four feet, oval, arched with a tight tooth. Hind quarters, general appearance. Muscular with the well-defined angulations of all articulations. One articulation, first, second, and third. We don't consider this articulation. It's enough to concentrate on, on these three. One, two, three. Uh, when viewed from the rear, the legs are straight and parallel. Thigh, moderately long, placed obliquely. Uh, Stifle, well angulated. Lower thigh, not shorter than the upper thighs, placed obliquely. Rear pastern, placed almost vertically. Seen from the side, a perpendicular line from the buttocks to the uh, ground. This is what we see when looking at the real dog. Vertical line from this point. Uh, from the buttocks to the ground should fall close to the front of the rear pasta. You can see. The presence of dew claws is not desirable. Hind feet oval arched with tight toes. Gait movement. Free movement. Skin is thick and elastic. Hair. Uh, maybe before, before to follow the text, I would like to see the movement. We have already um, considered this picture with these lines. We have analyzed the uh, value of these different colors, color lines, and now it's only uh, to repeat what we said. Mallet's uh, movement is free, and it's a very short description. But for the correct balance on the move, uh, the front stride and hind stride should be equal. It is here presented. That the uh, swing of the limbs should provide extended throat. And extension could be uh, extension is based on the principle of the 90 degrees angle by the axis of the pendulum, which creates boundaries uh, for these limbs at the stage of swing. And the final criterion is this yellow line. If the dog is able... <coughs> when landing to provide the eye and uh, paw of the fore leg uh, locating on one vertical line. And do not forget this point uh, of the limbs from the opposite side because this point is point uh, of support when the hind leg reaches this point and takes the weight of the whole body. That's why this point should be exactly under the equilibrium. This criterion provides the maximum stability at this stage and minimum of whopping. Now, skin, skin is thick and elastic. Coat, here, outer coat is harsh and straight. Undercoat is well developed, thick, soft, abundant, and woolly. The coat on the head and ears is short and dense. 
The coat on the shoulders and the neck is longer than the, on the body and forms a collar. The coat on the shoulders and the neck is longer than on the body from the collar. On the cheekbones, it forms side whiskers. Uh, you saw the head in front, and it was quite visible. On the, um, the coat on the withers is also slightly longer, uh, especially in males. Limbs are covered with a short, harsh, dense coat, which is a little longer on the back sides of the limbs. The coat on the rear legs forms trousers without feathering. Uh, there is a protective growth of hair between the tools. The tail is profusely covered with a straight and harsh hair, which is a little bit longer on the underside, but without feathering. Color. The most typical colors are black with white or white with black, solid black as well as the solid white also occur. Size. Height at widths. Males 52 to 58. Females 48 to 54. Just a moment. This is the example of the sexual. Uh, no, no, no. I stopped after, after. This is the example of sexual dimorphism. This is a female. This is the male. Very visible. Very typical. Uh, you can see bear and uh, like. They have to mark that they find out the game and hunter must come. One example and another game, please. Uh, squirrel is uh, not visible, but you can see the dog, which is barking, because of the squirrel, which is uh, somewhere high. Uh, now about the faults. Deviation from the sexual characteristics. Apple head, prominent forehead, insufficiently developed cheeks, overdeveloped superciliary arches, Partly missing pigmentation on nose, lips, and the eye rings. Lips when are pendulous, pincer bite, small, marked, or sparsely set teeth. Absence of more than any of PM1 and PM2. Eyes large, small, round, not obliquely set, deep set or protruding, light color. Back soft, narrow, or roached. Long loin, narrow or arched. Let me give some comments concerning the loin. Uh, should you remember the loin is described in the standard as the rather wide. Why, do, why is it necessary? Uh, the transverse, uh, transversal, um, uh, just a moment. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> what is in English for this term? Let me remember. Loin in dogs. Um, because of the anatomy, is not so wide like by horses. If the loin is narrow, then wobbling is uh, rather big. And wobbling of the crew or 
uh, side rolling leads to the ambling and uh, even pacing. To exclude this tendency, uh, loin should be wide, and the only muscles can help to widen the, the loin. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Croup that is flat, narrow, or steep. Chest that is narrow, flat, barrel-shaped, or shallow. Straight pasterns, weak pasterns, cat feet, hair feet, splay feet. Restricted movement. Thick, loose, or wrinkled skin. Insufficient undercoat, absence of rough and the side whiskers. Grain. Flex or specks on head and limbs of the same shed as ground color. Height two centimeters above the limit. <coughs> Severe faults. Um, before to go to this section, transfer processes by the dog is not so wide like by the horses. This is what I would like to say to you when um, analyzed the uh, loin and necessity, necessity to be wide, to withstand the wobbling and to withstand the um, side rolling. Uh, now, severe faults. Strong deviation from the sexual characteristics, light or heavy in bone, thick set body, obesity or megra, um, head too long, stop underdeveloped or abrupt, muscle that is turned up, dish face, too long or coarse, depigmented on nose, lips or eyelids. More than four missing premolars, including PMO1, PM1. Ears large, set low, not mobile. Round tipped ears, overdeveloped ear lobes. Yes, you can see practically not developed ear lobes. The development of the ear lobes is the special characteristic of another like a breed. And uh, I will uh, stop at this moment when analyzing the next standard, the standard of the West Siberian like. Please take a look. look. They should be not developed. And overdeveloped are severe faults. Okay. Round tip ears, overdeveloped ear lobes, shallow in chest. And uh, please let me remind you that the shallow chest is resulted by short chest, because the only long chest has the influence, the depth of the chest. So if you find shallow chest, Please check one more time the spinal proportions. And we will for sure find out that the back or rump are shorter than it should be, and that the loin is longer. Everything is related here. Defined east-west feet, pigeon toed or bandy front, Straight or too obliquely set shoulders, hindquarters narrow, will knees turning out, too narrow or too wide, overangulated or straight in the rear, heavy moment, stilted action or mincing gait, long coat on the back side of the forequarters, obvious, obvious fringes, 
untypical coat during shedding. 10. Red. Colored markings on the head and the legs. Different from ground color. Disqualification. Disqualifying faults. Aggressive or overly shy dogs. Any dogs clearly showing physical or behavioral abnormalities. Incorrect white. Incorrect white is already disqualification. Only scissor bite. Lack of teeth other than the PM1 and the M3, including the pincer bite before the age of six years old. It's very special remark because um, after this age, they are working dogs, the uh, scissor bite could be changed to the pincer bite and it will be not punished in this age. Before, it will. Uh, wall eye flecked or of different color, ears dropped or semi-dropped, natural stumpy tail, saber or otter tail. Uh, if I remember correctly, the natural stumpy tail is allowed by the Karelian beer dog. It's another difference. I believe that I'm <coughs> sure. Uh, too short or too long coat or plumbed tail. Any other color than the, those accepted. So, now we have some pictures and we look at them and analyze what we see and what we kind there, find there. This is the excellent example of very sound movement of the Russian European like. Usually on the leash or on the lead, when uh, in the ring they are judging, you cannot find it because according to the old hunting uh, Russian tradition, the dogs in the ring uh, should be judged uh, on the walk or on the fast walk um, changing to the short trot. This is uh, found in the nature. And uh, let us take a look at all details which were inscribed before. So, excellent top line, horizontal, front stride and hind stride are equal. The swing of the legs is practically inscribed in the right angle. You remember that angle. The vertical from eye falls on the paw of the front leg close to be landing. And the uh, what is interesting here, if you imagine that this leg and that uh, no, no, no. These uh, limbs are in front, uh, unlike it was um, painted before. And the limbs in the swing are placed uh, behind this couple of limbs. And these limbs are converging to the base of vertical line where center of gravity is located. So, everything is perfect. And this is a natural trot of the Russian-European like, Which in uh, our rings, um, organized by hunting societies, you can see uh, rather uh, rare. As I told you, they prefer to judge them on the walk. 
And uh, the illustration of that um, gate will be done when we come to a next breed. I have special pictures of that. So, excellent movement and uh, typical color, mental color, predominant black with a white located at the places typical for the mental color. Uh, we don't see here the dogs exactly in profile, so we will describe it only what we can find out for sure. Uh, medium long bodied, this is the beach, with an excellent top line, <coughs> which is strong. Chest is uh, at the level, uh, breastbone is at the level of the elbow ulna. This is. Um, elbows are almost under the withers. Well, defined angulations of the hind legs. Uh, head is almost in profile, but we can see that the, there are parallel planes and the stop is not abrupt. Uh, tail is touching the croup. Another example medium long body, with a short top line, with the correct depth of the chest, with a rather big head, a little bit Roman nose. The uh, stop looks a bit abrupt because of, of the superciliary ridge, a little bit rounded of a skull. Neck is of good length a bit too high set, but the dog is looking for something um, which is placed high. Maybe there is this quail, we can only imagine. Um, rather uh, straight in front, the whole front assembly could be better. Either fore chest or front angulations. You can see that the upper arm is rather straight. Moderately angulated in the rear. Uh, the same kind of uh, color like at the previous picture, not this one, previous. Predominant black and uh, uh, it is a mental colored dog. Almost square body dog predominant uh, black color. Rather short in the top line, with a strong top line. Enough uh, pronounced with us. Uh, head is um, of uh, sufficient length, but too deep in the skull and with uh, too snipey in the mass. Uh, um, uh, parallel planes, and correct stop. Small erected ears. Uh, arched neck of the moderate length. Straight in front. I mean, uh, either fore chest or upper arm. Upper arm and uh, forearm are almost at the same vertical line. Even the shoulder blade is um, well laid back. Um, chest is deep because of the breastbone, which is reaching the elbow ulna. And enough um, angulated behind. You can see that the, this stifle uh, is not uh, prominent here. This line is practically straight. Uh, this one. Square-bodied dog, strong. 
uh, deep chest with a short top line, head with a bit too rounded skull and uh, rather light muzzle, too snipey. Uh, good length of the neck, correct set. Excellent top line and tail set. Um, straight in front. This is the shoulder blade and this is the upper arm, which is practically upright. Enough angulated in the rear. Typical color, predominantly black. Almost square bodied dog. Bitches could be slightly longer in the body than the dogs. Compact body, solid body, with a short loin, which confirms the correct ratio between anatomical parts of the spine, according to the golden section, two, one, one. Uh, Height at elbows, height at elbow ulnas, slightly exceeds the depth of the body, uh, of the chest. But height at elbow joint is exactly in the middle of this distance. That's why, and because of the equal in length shoulder blade and upper arm, this vertical line is divided according to the initial Fibonacci numbers. Two, one, one as well. Correct angulations in front and in the rear. <coughs> Shoulder blade and hip joint on one horizontal line. Elbow joint and knee joint on another horizontal line. Elbow is under the withers. Stifle is under the tail set. And this angle should be 90 degrees. But we do not measure it in the ring, only if it is necessary to find out uh, the special zootechnical events. So, and this is the Russian-European like. According to the, regarding to the head, I have to say that it is a moderately long with a parallel planes and uh, with a stop which is not abrupt. Ears are rather small and erect. Eyes are not big. Uh, and obliquely set. And the colors are black and white, white and black, pure black and pure white, which are all accepted. The only acceptable white is scissor white. The level white could be uh, tolerated after the age of six years. That's it. I repeated the main things concerning the Russian European Leica standard. Now, the another Leica breed is coming. Thank you so much. In front of you, you can see another Leica breed. Zapadno-Sibirska like, West Siberian like. How it looks from outside and what is inside. And you can see absolutely the same idea of construction. We will read the standard and later on we will stop um, to discuss some important things. Uh, some specific things of this breed. And uh, this is the picture with uh, all lines and the angles 
in the accordance with the biomechanical model of the dogs. So, 2 1 1 ratio, which defines the proportions between actual deck, loin, and sacrum, 90 degrees angle by the axis of the pendulum, two horizontal lines where are located shoulder joint on humeral scapula and hip, first line, and the second one where are located elbow joint and stifle or knee joint. Two blue lines uh, according to which the elbow joint is under the top of the withers and stifle joint is under the tail set. The same. Покажите мне, пожалуйста, по порядку все постулаты. All postulates postulates should be textually repeated. So I will only illustrate how it looks. This is the principle of two horizontal lines, according to which uh, the dog is uh, constructed uh, so that the uh, ramp could not be higher than the withers. Because when dog is on the move, these lines are oscillating contrary, and the hip joint is going up so much as the stifle is going down as well. And they mutually compensate oscillations of each other, or which provide the horizontal position of the spine. And this position is the best because the motive thrust from the rear to be transmitted to the iliac tuber are transmitted along the top line. And if this top line is horizontal, then the dog shouldn't work to lift the center of gravity. And that's why is not tiring on the move. The principle of two verticals, or next postulate, is that uh, elbow joint is located under the withers, stifle is located under the tail set, and uh, these two lines provide the best slant of the upper arm and uh, of the upper thigh uh, that both angles either humeral scapula or coxofemoral are approaching the 90 degrees which is the optimal value for the best functioning of this uh, joints. Something else. I have to uh, draw your attention on the sciatic bone, which should be rather long and buttock should be rather prominent because of the extensors which are located in this area and uh, are in charge of the best drive when uh, hind leg is unbending. Uh, it is not uh, painted here another upper thigh which create 90 degrees angle with the uh, iliac bone where are located flexors. These muscles are in charge of the bending of the uh, joint. So, principle of two verticals provides the optimum value of humerus scapula and uh, 
uh, coxofemoral articulation. And this is a conclusion from the previous postulate. Uh, I believe you remember. This is the uh, line connecting the elbow joint and stifle joint, knee joint. And this is the line along the top line. But actual uh, spinal column is practically horizontal. So that's it. That's why. Um, the uh, spinal column from the beginning to the end is supported by two joints, elbow and stifle. And uh, that's why all disturbances which appear during um, jumping and falling are softened at this level. And uh, this is the one more condition to uh, maintain the horizontal position of the top line. This is the drawing I was looking um, when we um, considered the standard of the Russian European like. This is the principle <coughs> of the equality of the body length and distance between front and rear leg. It is illustrated the best here. So, what I said to you before, I would like to repeat it now because it's now quite visible. Length of the body from the point of sternum to the end of buttock, end of sciatic bone, and distance from the front leg to the rear. Uh, if the dog is in the correct zootechnical position, in correct zootechnical stance, what does it mean? Elbows are under the body and the hind legs are placed behind to the vertical pasta. This distance and this distance are equal. And I have already given the explanation why is that. But should you have uh, the questions, uh, please feel free to ask me after I will finish all my lecture. I am ready to give the answers to all your questions, please. And uh, this is the 90 degrees criterion uh, between two blue lines. The first one is along the median line of the shoulder blade, and the second one is connecting the hip joint and <coughs> iliac tuber. They create the right angle, and uh, from the point of intersection is lower the vertical line where the center of gravity is located. So you can see the dog on the move. Uh, nothing except the outer outlines. And uh, here you can see something which is painted here and here. And now, the full picture with the all lines, please. So, this is the same uh, dog, but with the all lines we used already before. Uh, but uh, I do prefer to, to repeat it. Because with this criteria, you can uh, describe, the, describe exactly what you see when judging. So, first of all, correct top line, firm and horizontal. 
second. First, uh, Franz stride and the hind stride are equal. Third, the vertical line from the point of intersection defines the uh, special point. Uh, high, um, legs from the opposite side are converging to the base of this vertical line where the center of gravity is located. And it is a very special uh, principle which name is principle of the convergent powers. Um, this uh, principle uh, provides the minimum of wobbling of the dog. If the hind leg um, is um, reaching to the base of this vertical line. Um, and uh, the, this is a um, condition of the maximum stability at this stage. You can see that the limbs, they swing, which determines, defines the extension of the movement, the whole extension, the whole swing, the whole span. They are uh, inscribed in this right angle, which defines boundaries of this swing. And the last one is the yellow line connecting eye and paw of the uh, foreleg at the moment of landing or close to it, which is a vertical. So all criteria are presented and you can say that the movement is balanced and sound. I mean the side movement. So, we can now read the standard. And keep in mind everything what was uh, considered before. Uh, I thought that we can go directly to the standard, but I change your mind and I think that it would be better to repeat everything concerning the harmonic model of the dogs using uh, as the illustration example of the West Siberian like. Let us take a look again and we will refresh in our memory what was saying about the Russian European like. I will not repeat anything about the golden section. I told enough about this matter. So I can only repeat this harmonious proportion which are universal and which will be illustrated here in case of the West Siberian like. Um, depth of the chest to the length of the top line from the first thoracic vertebra to the tail set is the golden section, three to five. Next one, please. Length of the chest to the length of the body is the golden section. I will not repeat how I'm measuring I told several times how it could be, it should be done. Um, some, maybe, but I may, maybe still I will um, add something. Should you measure the length of the chest as well as the length of the body, you will never get three to five, because this part will be 
shortened, just a little, but shortened. And when you measure from the sternum, it will be correct length either of the chest or of the body. Дальше. Uh, one more time. Length of the body to the length of the diameter connecting the occiput and uh, pole of the rear leg placed behind to the vertical pastern is golden section. Considered in the vertical plane parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body. Height at elbow joint, joint, not elbow alna, joint is working. So the sum of length of the head and neck is golden section. And the last one, please. Girth of the muzzle to the girth of the skull is three to five. And this is important to provide the most powerful bite of the dog. So, we can go on now. We can read the standard. West Siberian Lake. Uh, this native Russian hunting breed comes from the from to the Ural, West and East Siberia forest area and was selected from the Hante and Mansi hunting dogs. In the beginning of 20th century, the first standards of Vogul or Mansi and Ostyak or Hanti, like us, were created by Russian sinologists. In 1947, the new qualification of Laika breeds was offered and closely related Hanti and Mansi offsprings were united in, into one breed. The new breed standard for Zapadna Sibirska Laika was approved in 1952. Nowadays, Zapadna Sibirska Laika, or West Siberian Laika, is the most prevalent hunting breed in Russia and widely spread in all wooden areas of the country from Karede to Kamchatka. The breed seems to be especially popular in its native and uh, original areas. Foundation stock from kennels of dogs with a stable inheritance of work and well-established quality in type and ability to work has been introduced in all sinological centers of the Russian Federation. <coughs> General appearance. Dog of medium to slightly larger size, substantial with a strong and clean build. The length of the body measured from the fore chest to the buttocks is slightly superior to the height measured from the withers to the ground. If you were attentive, uh, you can uh, remember that in case of the Russian European like it was written that the length of the body is measured from the point of shoulders to the buttocks. And in this case, the length of the body is measured from the sternum to the buttocks. This small difference is based on a very simple idea. The longer are the dogs, the more prominent is forechest. So in this case, forechest, otherwise, in other words, um, Turnum 
and the humerus scapula joint do not lie in one plane. And the sternum is more prominent. That's why in the standard, the length of the body is described as I uh, read to you. Uh, sexual dimorphism is clearly pronounced. Males are bigger than females and clearly masculine. Muscles are well developed and bone strong. Just a moment. Important proportions. Body length exceeds height at with us as 100 to 107 in males and as 100 to 108 percent in females. Height at with us exceeds height at the croup by one two centimeter males and is equal or is equal to or exceeds the height at the croup by one centimeter females. Length of the head exceeds considerably uh, considerably the width of the head. Length of the muzzle is equal to or a little less than half the length of the head. Legs height from ground to elbow slightly exceeds half the height at the width. Uh, one more time. What is described is quite correct. If we measure the height at elbow, at the level of the ulna of elbow. Then height at this level of the foreleg exceeds the depth of the chest. But if we measure at the level of the elbow joint, they are equal. Катюша, дайте мне следующую картинку со всеми линиями. And you can see that the elbow joint is in the middle of this distance, this one, and the humeral scapula joint is at the level of the middle of the rest. Uh, behavior and temperament. Steady, evenly tempered, a vigorous dog with a very well developed sense of scent and detecting game, which an alert, sensitive and pronounced passion for the hunt, is equally keen to the hunt feather or furred game, self-confident and alert towards strangers. Special feature. Head. Мне нужна голова отдельно. Head is lean, wedge-shaped in proportion to the size of the dog. Uh, it is similar in shape to an uh, equilateral triangle when viewed from the above. A cranial part is moderately broad, lesser in females than in males. Here you can see head in profile. Uh, uh, cranial region um, elongated. Uh, we can see this one or that one, the same here. Uh, skull elongated, obviously longer than broad. When seen from front, flat or slightly rounded. The bridge of the muzzle is parallel to the top line of the skull. Uh, the sagittal crests and occiput are well pronounced. Occiput is also covered by the hair. The mm, uh, occipital part of the skull is rounded. It should be 
viewed from from behind. Uh, Superciliary arch is slightly developed. It is visible. A stop slightly pronounced. Slightly pronounced. Facial origin. Nose of medium size black. In white dogs, a slightly lighter brownish nose color is tolerated. Muzzle, moderately pointed. A broadening uh, in the fung area. The length of the muzzle is half or slightly shorter than the length of the head. Then the length. Oh, oh, oh. This is the technical mistake. That the length of the skull. Muzzle and skull are either equal or muzzle is slightly shorter than the skull. This is a technical mistake in text. Viewed in profile, the muzzle is moderately wedge-shaped. Lips, tight, visible. Jaw teeth, white, large, strong, well-developed, evenly positioned and uh, uncrowded. Complete 42 teeth, according to the dental formula, scissor bite. Cheeks, clean and in cheeks, bones. Eyes, not large, oval shaped, slanting. Set fairly deep, more than in other like a breeze with intent and intelligent expression. The eye color is dark brown or brown in accordance with the coat color. Ears, pricked, set on high. Uh, v shaped it with the pointed lips, tips. Mobile, attention please. Ear lobes are slightly developed. This is a special feature of the breed. Pay and attention, please. Neck, muscular, dry and long. You can see length of the neck and length of the head. A little bit longer than the head. Length equal to length of the head. Long could be longer or equal. Oval in the cross section. The neck is set at approximately 45 or 55 to 55 to the horizontal line. Body. Top line is firm and uh, solid. Slightly sloping from the withers to the tail set. Uh, withers, well pronounced, especially in males. Back, strong, straight, well muscled, moderately broad. Loin. Short, moderately broad, well muscled, with a slight arch. One more time. Attention, please, to the width of the loin. Because unlike horses, the transfer, transverse, transverse uh, processes are not so developed. They are rather 
narrow and the only muscles could be broaden uh, the loin which is important to withstand uh, uh, wobbling of the crop or side rolling which leads to the ambling or even pacing uh, croup broad moderately long slightly sloping chest moderately deep broad the chest reaches the point of the elbow elbow alna that's why moderately deep if it reach the elbow joint then it will be written deep and it reach the elbow alna level long oval shaped in the lateral section underline and belly tucked up the underline from the chest to the abdominal cavity rises slightly now let us analyze what is written here and how does it match our universal canon named 211 either along the top line or along the vertical line uh, lowered from the widths to the ground it is written that the loin should be short and what about the length of the back the question but it is mentioned that the chest is long that means that its upper part is long that's why we can uh, state that the back is long and loin is short rather uh, long croup doesn't contradict the shortness of the sacrum because the sacrum is the only upper part of the croup and uh, uh, mainly length of the croup is based on the length of the sciatic bones so 211 is valid for this breed and uh, the natural selection uh, which was uh, very often used in the past it gave this result and this is not surprising a tail tight curl carried over back or hips when full straightened they can reach the hock joint or maybe one to two centimeters shorter limbs uh, four quarters viewed from the front straight set moderately wide apart and parallel the height of the forelegs from the elbow to the ground is a little superior to half of the height at the width we have already discuss, discussed that and I believe that my comments are exhaustive uh, shoulder long and well laid back shoulder blade i mean upper arm long placed obliquely muscular well angulated between the shoulder blade and the upper arm so well defined the humerus scapula elbow fitting close to the body points of the elbows are well developed and placed uh, back parallel to the body axis it was already discussed why it is important but maybe one more time i would like to draw your attention on the fact that the elbows are close to the chest 
um, and more precisely are close to the breastbone because the elbows are the most weak joints of the dog and uh, if they attach the breastbone they have support special support and uh, they create the preconditions that the elbow elbows will move forward um, translationally without any deviations uh, aside which is important uh, forearm long straight um, not coarse muscular oval in cross section uh, pasta not long slightly sloping mm. slightly sloping when viewed from the side dew claws are not desirable they could be damaged that's why many times they are uh, deleted hindquarters general appearance muscular strong with the well-defined angulations of all articulations that means coxofemoral stifle and cock when viewed from the rear legs are straight and parallel thigh moderately long placed obliquely uh, obliquely <coughs> stifled knee well bent lower thigh moderately long placed obliquely not shorter than the upper thigh you can see a rare pastern placed almost vertically seen from the side a perpendicular line from the buttocks to the ground should fall close to the front of the rear pastern let us take a look this is what we see on the uh, end of the body buttock correct Uh, dew claws are not desirable. Hind feet slightly smaller than the forefeet, oval arch and tight toes. Middle the toes are slightly longer. Gait movement, free energetic. Typical movement is a short trot alternating with a gallop. Uh, let us take a look one more time at the picture when the dog is uh, on the move. So, one more time, this picture we have been already analyzing. But free energetic typical movement is a short trot alternating with a gallop. Uh, short or long, it depends. It depends on the criterion of um, extension. And the extension is based on this criterion all the rest was already described equal length of the front and hind strides and all other features which i have repeated uh, several times today uh, skin thick and elastic without any faults and subcutaneous Cellular, cellular tissue coat uh, outer coat is dense harsh and straight under coat is well developed soft abundant and woolly the coat on the head and ears is short and dense the coat on shoulders and the neck is longer than on the body and forms the color we will uh, see several pictures <laughs> Now, please only keep in your mind. 
The coat, uh, yes. Um, on the cheekbones is for side whiskers. In males, the coat on the whiskers in, is longer. Limbs are covered with a short, harsh, dense coat, which is slightly longer on the back side of the four limbs. Here. Uh, the coat on the back of rear legs forms trousers without feathering. There is a protective growth of the brush-like uh, brush hair between the tooth. The tail is profusely covered with a straight and harsh hair that is just slightly longer on the underside side but without feathering. Color. Gray with a reddish brown, red with a reddish brown, gray, red, fawn, and reddish brown in all shades. Pure white or fatty color, uh, including white with patches of any color mentioned above similar to the ground body color. Size 55 to 62 males, 51 to 80, 58 females. Faults. Deviations from the sexual dimorphism, slightly nervous or lacking confidence with the strangers, lack uh, of the sagittal crest and pronounced occiput, Roman nose, light colored eyes, pale pigmentation on nose, lips and uh, eye rims. Lack of teeth, absence of not more than four premolars regarding PM1 and PM2. Pincer bite after the age of six years. Already explained. Yes, set low, soft with a weak ear carriage, not mobile. Group horizontal, slightly sunken. Straight shoulders, elbows turned in or outward. Flat ribbed chest, slightly shallow in chest, flat feet, splayed feet, flaking or otherwise, uh, other words, rounding of the same shade and base coat color on head and lips, lack of undercoat, absence of the coat color and side whiskers except the, for natural shading, restricted movement, Exceeding the maximum height with a plus two centimeters in females, two centimeters below the minimum height in males. <coughs> Severe faults. Obvious deviation from the sexual dimorphism. Excitability to high. Uh, males of feminine type, females of masculine type, obesity or migra, abrupt stop, <coughs> snub nosed muzzle, short muzzle, loose lips, depigmentation of nose, lips or eye rings, round eyes, horizontal set, bulging, yellow eyes, loose eyelids, lack of teeth, small, sparsely set teeth. Uh, just a moment. Yes, standing out from the sides of the head, round tipped, too big, overdeveloped ear lobes. Hollow back, roached back. Long loin, narrow, sagging or arched loin, overbuilt. Shallow in chest. Tail too long or too short or not touching back or hips. Obvious east-west pointing feet, pinched pigeon toed or bandy front, down in pasta. Overangulated or straight in hind quarters, knees turning out, cow hocked or narrow in the rear. Heavy restricted movement, stilted or mincing gait. Too long caught on the back side of the four quarters. Pronounced feathering on the upper thighs and the tail, wavy, curly, soft, or too long coat, 
coat parted on the back and the withers. Excessive flecking, rounding, of the same nuance as base coat color on head and uh, limbs. Flecks of different color than the ground color. Black or black with uh, white color. Deviation from the size by more than plus minus two centimeters. Height at widths less than the height at the crew. Disqualifying faults. Aggressive or overly shy dogs. Any dogs showing physical or behavioral abnormalities. Incorrect bite. Right mouth. Four or more missing teeth including PM1 or M3. Excess incisors. Wall eye. Flex. Semi-dropped. Plumbed tail. Otter or sabre tail. Stumpy tail. Too short or too long coat. Coat color that is genetic brown genetic blue, brindle, or albino. And not a bad, as usually, male animals should have two apparently normal testicles, fully descendant into the scrotum. Only functionally and clinically healthy dogs with breed typical conformation should be used for breeding. This is the standard. Now it is a time to look at the photos, uh, describe the photos, and uh, describe the dogs on the photos, and analyze what we can find out, positive and negative. This is the dog when hunting. You can see many things. Strong build, full of spirit, angry, if not fierce, with a very typical expression, excellent developed body and uh, chest, strong in bones and uh, ready to work. Uh, you can see the dog when it is working. You can see the temperament and spirit of the dog. Beautiful head and expression. Arch neck, which um, can demonstrate also temperament. Uh, extended movement. Nice top line, well-developed chest and typical color. These dogs found the game. They found the squirrels. And this is why I asked to put this picture uh, to illustrate how do they do that. We saw already these pictures and let me please to describe this dog for the beginning. Uh, it's slightly long-bodied bitch. Looks a little bit too short in the body. Anyway, body is uh, solid with an excellent top line, well-developed with us, strong top line, correctly set, set on and curled the, the tail <coughs> with a good depth of the chest. Uh, nice feminine head, beautiful shape of the head, arched a bit too high set neck with the arched uh, crest. Uh, straight in front, straight in the upper arm, um, not enough developed forechest. Excellent rear angulation. If we add something in front, I mean, if we increase more the forechest, 
and uh, will uh, lay it back more the upper arms everything will uh, look quite nicely in this case almost square bodied dog probably this is the dog it's difficult to say exactly but it looks like a dog almost square bodied strong with a solid body with a rather big and strong head with a parallel planes, dark eyes and well pigmented lips uh, correctly uh, set ears of uh, pro well proportioned size long neck a bit arched excellent developed with us a bit too soft back short croup short sacrum and short croup buttocks should be much more prominent and you can see uh, the angulations uh, elbow is almost under the visas let us see this this shoulder blade this is an upper arm oh, quite okay not perfect but okay but the rear are straightened the dog is straight behind look at this this is the upper thigh and this is the lower thigh and there is almost no angulation in the uh, place of um, knees and also uh, hock angulation is not sufficient even the uh, step is not a big but it was enough to straighten to straighten the all the angulations uh, typical color uh, quite well coated dog with a correct tail set and tail shape that's it so we can go on and this is this is beautiful head and expression This is a long-bodied bitch and a bit short-legged and a bit overbuilt. The head is long, a bit too deep stop, a bit too deep in the skull, uh, a rather short neck, uh, enough developed with us, depression, uh, in the region of the back after the withers and uh, the top line is rising to the rump chest is deep reach the level of the elbow straight in front look at the shoulder position and this is the upper arm almost upright and uh, look at the rear angulation is a bit better than the front uh, angulations but still only enough well coated bitch correct color correct tail set and uh, hair on the tail that's it a long-bodied heavy beach to fat uh, with a beautiful head and expression very beautiful shape and expression are really very typical uh, long too massive neck too thick at the base uh, well developed with us strong enough top line a bit rising to the rump slightly overbuilt construction deep chest belly is not tucked up at all front angulation shoulder blade is quite oblique upper arm is quite oblique elbow is almost under the withers 
and uh, uh, rare angulations. This is the point of stifle. So the upper thigh is quite long, as well as the second thigh. But the uh, beach is too heavy. And that's why it is difficult for her to uh, place behind her rear legs, uh, maintaining the correct angulations. They, she is trying to straighten the angulations because of the excess of the weight. Typical color, well coated. Main fault is too heavy. A uh, very nice beach in the working condition, unlike the previous one. You can see that she needs more body, more substance. Uh, long bodied, rather high legged, with a moderately developed um, bones. Um, head uh, is quite long. It's difficult to say exactly about the um, stop because of the superciliary arch, which is very visible, and exaggerate this uh, stop. Um, nevertheless, dark eyes, dark pigmented lips, long, rather massive neck, well developed with us, correct, uh, strong top line. Uh, rather high set tail of a good shape, shape, withered enough. Uh, chest is deep. Front angulation is okay. Look at the elbow and the withers, almost at one vertical line. And excellent angulated in the rear. Um, presented not in the full uh, coat condition. And needs more substance. But anyway, very nice representative of the breed. It's a beautiful specimen. Moderately long bodied, with a solid body. Look at the beautiful top line and deep chest. Look at the very feminine head, maybe a little bit uh, it needs, uh, needs a little bit stronger underjaw, but correct profile of the upper lines, correct uh, stop, and follow these white markings and see that it is, uh, it is not too deep. Um, erect, yes, high set, arched, beautiful neck. Excellent top line, enough developed with us. This is the beach, it is quite okay. Very solid uh, top line, uh, and uh, it could be uh, provided only uh, by the best proportions of the top line. It is impossible now to uh, find out these uh, divisions. But this result could be provided only with, uh, by the correct proportions of the top line. A high set tail of a good shape, well feathered. Excellent developed chest and fore chest. Uh, practically uh, elbow joint and with us uh, on one vertical line, but the dog is on the snow, so it's difficult to uh, say exactly how it, it is in reality. But we can say for sure that her hind uh, legs are angulated perfectly. Uh, she's in the correct coat condition. Nice color, typical. And that's it. What we can see. Medium long bodied, deep chested, strong dog. Nice head, long with the parallel planes, dark eyes, dark 
um, black pigmented mm, lips, correct, yes, set and carriage, nice arched neck, long one, excellent developed with a strong top line, correct tail set, excellent front angulations and uh, uh, excellent four chest nicely prominent elbow joint is under the with us correctly angulated behind in the full coat condition nice in temperament this is an example how dogs are moving on the leash in the ring you can see slow trot uh, and this is uh, the photo i asked to use only to demonstrate this kind of gait i will not describe the dog i will only uh, suggest you to look at the specific of the movement at the shows at the hunting shows, at the shows organized by hunting societies. We can only suppose if uh, this specimen will be trotting, because there is a, no any phase of suspension. All the uh, feet are on the ground. So this is the walk. <clears throat> with the one side legs moving contrary. And here you can see dog uh, when moving uh, on the walk. Uh, you can see this one side legs move forward both, as well as the limbs from the opposite side are moving back together. They are moving in one phase. And it would be not correct to qualify this gait as the pacing, because the pacing is the kind of trot. And trot differs from the walk because of the suspension. And there is no suspension. All the feet are on the ground. And this gait name is ambling. So it's quite typical what you can see and the hunting shows. Dogs on the move. And the first picture you saw uh, the dog with the legs moving contrary. In this case, they move in one phase. Uh, That's it. All the photos are discussed. Что ты есть еще? Нет, нет, все. Да. Все. Okay. This is the pictures. I would like to demonstrate to you, after we read the standard, standard uh, and uh, after we uh, were informed about the approach, model approach, biomechanical and harmonic, which could help us to understand more exactly and uh, deeper all provisions which are mentioned in the standard. So, I would be happy should my explanation was exhaustive and understandable. But anyway, uh, as I told you already, I can give the answers to your questions should you have them. We have uh, one question in the question section. Yes, and, uh, yes please. Вы откроете или мне зачитать? Я, я не вижу здесь. Если можно открыть. Вопрос у вас над головой. As, uh, я зачитаю. As, as both standards say about tail full, straightened can reach the hook. Yeah. Is it just enough to see the curl sickle form? Just to, see, just to see. Reaching the hook. Huh? 
no, no, no. I, I do not understand because of the bad, bad connection. And then open, Maybe uh, I then could open see this uh, uh, section question. Right. A question above your head. Mm. Uh, 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 uh. Section question. Uh, mm -mm. I see from the right side something, but not the question you mentioned now. Uh, where is the section question? Uh, section. A uh, question mark above your head. Above my head. Uh huh. Above the video. Questions. It was then to say about the tail before straight and can reach the heart is just enough to see curl cycle form or it's necessary to straighten it is reach the hawk. I see. Um, I don't think that the judges um, will straighten the tail in the ring only if they are in doubts about its length. Uh, usually we don't do that. Only if we are in doubt. Uh, did I give you a good answer, please? Alex? Are you satisfied with the answer or what? Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Something else? No, nothing. No? Okay. Thank you very much. Of course, today was some more um, heavy, some more complicated to listen because of two breeds instead of one. But this is the only way how we could finish all our um, cycle um, before the end of this year. So next time, also, two breeds are allocated for our lecture. It will be uh, Yakutian like and uh, uh, East Siberian like. And at the uh, very end uh, will be a lecture devoted to the Samoyed. And it will be the only breed considered. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> that time. But uh, one more time. Every time before to read and analyze the standard, my idea is to tell you about the universal approach which is based on two models and these two models could be used in your practice to uh, increase the objectivity of your assessment and to give the key for the breeders to um, accelerate their breeding progress. So, if you uh, use, if you, uh, how should I say it, use to use, <laughs> if uh, these models will be common to you, you will find out how they are um, uh, efficient. So, please uh, try to to use it. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for your attention. One more time, thank you for your interest in our native breeds. And uh, to be continued. Да. See, see you next Tuesday. To the next Tuesday, yes. Спасибо большое. Thank you very much. Thank you Bye. very much. Bye. Good night.